In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to look up the last non-empty cell value, whether in a column or in a row. I showed you five methods to do that, either by using a lookup function, an offset function, an index function, an xlookup function, or a different xlookup function with wildcards. I encourage you to watch this tutorial by clicking on the link below this video. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you the most robust and dynamic way to find the last record based upon a condition and I'll be using Power Query to do that. So let's explore the work situation. In this worksheet, I have a table of sales transactions with thousands of records and it shows an ID for each client, the client name, the city, the state, email, date, and their amount. If I select a client name from a drop list, and because each one of the clients has many transactions, I want to be able to extract automatically the most recent transaction for the selected client. Conditional formatting highlights all the transactions for the selected client. If I select a different name from the drop list, then automatically I get the most recent order for that client. Now I want to build this project from ground up in Excel. Here is my start file and I have two tables. The main table, this is the orders table. I converted it into a table and if I click on the table design tab, I gave it the name orders. And here is my drop list in cell I2. It's also a table and I gave it the name client. I start my project by sending the two tables to Power Query. I start with the drop list, which is the client table. And to send it to Power Query, I click on the data tab of the ribbon and I click on from table range. The query editor opens on top of Excel. All what I'm going to do in this table is to convert the single value into a text value and I do that by right-clicking on the single record I have and I drill down. Then I end up by having one single text value. I'm going to load this table as a connection only and I click on the Home tab, Close and Load, Close and Load to, and I select Only Create a Connection and I hit OK. Now I want to send the Orders table to Power Query I select any single cell. I can go to the data tab and click on from table range. Alternatively, I can use the shortcut Alt APT. And I can see the orders table in the query editor. And with the client ID column selected, I want to group the ID column. I go to the transform tab and I click on group by. The group by dialog box opens. For the operation, I'm going to change the count rows into all rows and I hit OK. Then I get a table. If I click in the empty space to the right side of table, then I see all the transactions corresponding to a specific client, 106 and these are all the transactions. What I'm going to do at this point is to modify the M code. I just want to get the most recent transaction. And to do that, I'm going to expand the formula bar. Then I'm going to delete everything following the word each up to the closing square bracket. And I'll be using a special Power Query function called table.max. Type a space and then I type table.max. I open bracket. The table.max function will look at each one of the tables returned by grouping and it will extract the maximum value from a field I specify. And because I wanted to look at each record, I type underscore comma and then in double quotes, I type the field that I want, which is the date. Now, if I hit enter, instead of a table, I get a record. Let's look at one of the records. When I click here, I get a full record, which is the record corresponding to the most recent transaction. Now let's collapse the formula bar. 
and expand this entire field by clicking on the double side pointing arrows. I see the different fields. I don't need the ID because I already have it. And I take the check away from use original column name as prefix. And I hit OK. And now I get the most recent transaction for each one of the clients. I can look at the data type. For the ID, that's a whole number. For the full name, I want it text. And then for the city, it should be text. There are different ways of changing the data type. I can let Power Query detect the data type automatically. And for the email, I'm going to select text as well. For the date, of course, that's a date field. And for the amount, I change it to currency. Now I want to filter the client name. I click on the down arrow for the client name. I take the check away from select on. And let's select any client. I'm selecting Arturo. I hit OK. And I get one single client. Now I'm going to modify the M code one more time because I want to make it dynamic and link it to my drop list. My drop list is named the client query. Then I'm going to replace the name of the client, whatever I have in double quotes, by the query name client. I hit enter and I get the most recent transaction for the client in my drop list at the Excel end which is Bruno. Now it's time to close and load this query. I go to the Home tab. I click on the down arrow for Close and Load. Select Close and Load to. And I want to load my query as a table in the existing worksheet. I'm going to put it in cell I5. Where I hit OK, I get the most recent transaction for the client coming from the drop list. I'm going to close the queries and connections pane and we need to improve the functionality and make it a lot more dynamic. I want to expand some columns and adjust the column width. I adjusted the column width. I want to change the date format. I use the shortcut Control shift 3 I want to change the format for the amount. I make it currency, Control shift 4 And now before testing, Every time I select a different name from the drop list and then I hit refresh, it will return the most recent transaction for the selected client. But it will also change the width of the column with every refresh. And to avoid that, I'm going to change a property before testing. I select a cell in the query result. I go to the table design tab. I take the check away from filter button. To remove the down pointing arrows, I click on Properties, and in the External Data Properties, I take the check away from Adjust Column Width. I hit OK. From now on, whenever I test my query by selecting a different name from the drop list, it shouldn't change the column width. Let's test. I select a different name. Let it be Jailin. And now I want to refresh. Then I go to the Data tab of the ribbon. And I click on Refresh On, and I get the most recent transaction for the selected client. I select a different name to test one more time. I selected Diane. I can also refresh by using the shortcut Control alt f 5 And I get the result I want, the most recent transaction for Diane. To avoid refreshing the query manually every time, whether by hitting the Refresh All button on the data tab, or by using the shortcut Control alt f 5 I want to automate this process by creating a very simple event code in VBA. To do that, I right-click on the Sheet tab and I select View Code. The Visual Basic Editor opens and we have two drop lists up at the top. I click on the left drop list and I select Worksheet. Automatically, there is an event created. It's not the one I want. I want to change it and select from the right drop list the change event. And I can go and delete the first one. I don't need it. Between the private sub and the end sub, I want to write my conditional statement. Let me switch back to Excel to show you what I intend to do. Alt F11. And here I want to say, if there is a change in cell I2, go ahead and refresh this workbook. 
Alt F11 to go back to VBA, and my code will look at the selected cell called the target, and it says if target.address equals range i2.address, then go ahead and refresh the workbook. And my code will read if target.address, which means the selected cell, equals range i2 in double quote in brackets dot address, which means the cell having the drop list, then in this case, this workbook dot refresh on. And I close the if statement by an end if. I finished creating the simple code and now let's enjoy the project. I close the Visual Basic Editor and I want to test. I go to the drop list in cell I2 and I select China. Automatically, the query updates and I get the most recent transaction for the selected client. I select a different one and I get the most recent transaction for Bruno. I showed you in this tutorial how to use Power Query to extract the most recent transaction of a huge list of client transactions. And if you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.